What's up, guys? Sorry it's been a little while, but I'm back at it. I've uh, done the the older brother video, but I didn't like it, so I'm redoing it again. And uh, it's going to be done right this time. So <clears throat> I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, but this time I'm going to start with a little bit of prayer because I want God to speak through me to you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Father God, I come to you th tonight and I ask you to, to use me, Lord, to teach through me, to be the words for me as I go through and I learn and I learn as I teach because it is you speaking. In your name, I thank you for hearing this prayer and teaching this through me. Amen. Guys, what is up? All right, so I'm going to jump right into it, and I just want to let you guys know, thank you for jumping on to being there with me, being patient. And uh, sometimes things take a little bit of time, but I'm here. All right. So, <clears throat> the older brother. I want to talk to you guys about him. So, being the older brother, think of this as someone who has been... Uh, in Christianity a little bit longer or in some say would say religion um, now I'm saying religion like this because it's actually a way of life it's we're following Christ it's not really religion it's who we are but some people treat it as that believe in it as that and we need to tell you know we need to be able to show those people what it actually means to be so uh, when I say like that being the older buddy uh, brother or the older Christian who has been a Christian longer, uh, you know, and is uh, in a higher place, and knows more, and sees themselves as the upper, the up, the epsilon or whatever you call it of uh, Christianity, and they they feel like they can judge on others because they're so Christian. Well, at least that's kind of how I'm gonna put it. <clears throat> Uh, in this story, uh, so look at this brother and the way Jesus told this story is he actually put this brother in the end of the story because Jesus didn't really uh, just want to talk about the younger brother or the one who was lost, the prodigal son. He wanted to finish with that because he was also teaching, when he was teaching this story, he was teaching it not only to uh, people around him but his disciples as well as the Pharisees or the people who saw themselves as the rule makers or the ones who uh, were highest in religion around him and uh, could judge others because they were so godly he wanted to teach them a lesson and kind of have them step down and into a more a more humble spot <clears throat> so uh that little bit of background there it says meanwhile the older son was in the field working okay so yes the older son like I said uh, he was actually out there working he was doing his thing <clears throat> when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and asked one of the servants what was going on so Imagine going out working and um, doing your thing, you know, making that money or making the whatever you need to pay the bills or whatever. He's working for his dad. He's out in the field. He's making sure, you know, things are done right. <clears throat> and he asked one of the servants what was going on. They asked this. The servant said, your brother's back. Um... And your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating of uh, <clears throat> because of his safe return. Now, that's awesome. Remember going back, the fattened calf was done for very special events. Uh, this is the animal that was really taken care of, fed the nicest uh, grass, food, whatever they were doing. And um, this calf was killed in celebration of the prodigal son or the, the lost brother the second brother the younger one coming back love that right I, I mean if one of my kids came back after doing something crazy I know I'd probably be angry and happy at the same time 
I don't know whether I punish them or welcome them home or welcome them home, let them know they're safe here, and then like pff, smack them upside the head like, what are you doing, man? But that that's me. I'm not I'm not the guy, <laughs> you know. Um, so it says the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. Uh, this happens a lot um, when they s when um, people um, who have been in in the walk a lot longer have been doing their part, have been trying to go out, you know, preach the word and do all of this stuff. Um, they see someone younger, someone new going out and they're getting more attention, uh, more likes, maybe they're using social media. I don't know. Uh, and it seems like they're getting the spotlight more than someone who's been in it for years and blah, blah, blah. So they, you know, they cast judgment or they, they say something or whatever. Um, it's just jealousy. Should not be jealous. I should any of you guys ever decide to teach and you know and just blow up i'll be so happy for you guys <laughs> um but um and he wouldn't go and remember and his father had to come out and he had to beg him his dad like hey what's going on man like the party's going on your brother's home like Come and celebrate with us. But he replied, All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. Okay. First off, he's talking about himself. Okay. He's a little bit about me, me, me right here. So he says, All of these years I have slaved for you. He just called himself a slave. Like, he put himself in the position of a slave. Remember, this household back then, they were, they had, they, li they, they lived very well. And he just called himself a slave. He put himself in the spot of their servants, their hired servants, their slaves, all of that stuff. <clears throat> says, I've always done everything you've asked me to do. You know, and he says he never once refused to do something he was told, which I got to call BS on that. Like years and years of, yes, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, I'm sure he actually refused or didn't actually follow through on things. You know, it's just, it, it's human nature. Um, but he, he pretty much comes like, I'm better. You know, I'm, I'm, I've always done better than my brother, I'm all, you know, uh, I've done all of this, me, 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 I deserve it, you know, and he said, and in all that time, you never gave me one young goat for a feast with my friends, so he's saying, why haven't I gotten anything, and I'm like, bro, in the beginning of the story, when the second son asked for his part, the father divided it between the two sons, so he had his part. And I don't know how long the second son was gone, but that older brother did get his part. And he's always had uh, the ability to be able to do stuff. The question is, did he ever ask for it? Or did he just expect it to just be given to him once? Remember, God says, ask and you shall receive. And when he says that, you do have to also put your part of it into it and you have to believe for it. you actually have to have faith now faith is a funny thing it's not hope faith is is straight up belief that it's going to happen faith is already talking it into your life writing it down into your life uh, and that part is uh, a whole different story um, or a different teaching not for today but maybe one day I'll teach it <clears throat> anyways when he said 
not even when Young go for a feast with his friends, like, I don't know why he didn't ever ask for it, like, and this is me guessing he, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but this is, that's at least how I saw it, and he said, yet, when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf, he, he, he flipped the switch there, I don't know if you guys saw it, <clears throat> But he straight up went from me, 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 I did this, I've always done that, I've never disobeyed you, I blah, 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 I, 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 me, I deserve, blah. He's, and then he went to your, now he's blaming dad. He's like, your son, or this son of yours comes back. After squandering all your money. Now he did. He did. He, I mean he. Asked for his part. Took what he could. He bounced. He partied. He blew, he blew it off on. The older brothers as prostitutes. And never said that earlier in the story. He's. Casting judgment there. He's. Uh, immediately seen someone as it is. Now. A lot of. Uh, religious folk. Or people. Who like to cast judgment. Or believe themselves better than others. Uh, immediately tend to do this and I, I, I'd like to ask you not to uh, no matter who the person is what they look like what they dress like um, fully tatted up no tattoos um, uh, the way they dress they could dress like a gangster they could dress like a businessman they could uh, drive a specific type of car they could talk a certain way. They could be from a certain part of the neighborhood. Doesn't matter. You don't know their story. You don't know their life. Don't ever uh, immediately judge based on sight, belief, or thoughts of what this person possibly does in their life. <clears throat> and he says, you know, you celebrate by killing the fat calf. Like, why are you throwing a party for this person why should you be celebrating now father god says that every time someone is saved and comes to jesus a party is thrown just for them the angels all it's awesome so this is what this part of the parable is t kind of talking to me about like, hey, I don't care if it's a fully tatted up biker who's been through all kinds of brawls, uh, fights, drugs, alcohol. If he lays down his life for Christ and he starts trying to live on the path, living on the path doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean that your trials are over. It doesn't mean that it, uh, uh, life becomes easier. But you have someone to lean on, and that's Jesus. And it, it, it's a feeling of freedom. Um, I'd love to invite you guys to meet him, but I'll do that here in just a moment. <clears throat> that's what I saw there. Like, why are you partying for this person who has been, who has thrown away his life, who has done all these crazy things who has done drugs who has uh been to multiple people who doesn't care about marriage who uh possibly did a lot of really bad things i don't know maybe they robbed the bank i'm not gonna judge um but these are just thoughts that go across my head it's not for us to do that it's for us to to come to jesus remember jesus hung out with uh, the tax collectors and the sinners, like the people who were looked to as the, the, the worst of the worst back then. He would eat and he would drink with them and he would, you know, have a good time and teach them and bring them, you know, and, and show them that, you know, God still loves them. And uh, back then the Pharisees were really angry, like, why is he doing this? Why is he hanging out with these people and not with us? Like, what's going on? Um... 
So his father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me. Father accepts him. You've always been by me. You've done what you know what you're called to do. And everything I have is yours. So this is what that older brother didn't see, is that he's always had it, but he's been too stubborn and too um, judgmental over others to see what was in front of him the whole time. And a lot of people get stuck like this, not just in, in their walk in Christianity, Christianity or uh, religion, as I said earlier, um, but in, in a lot of things like... Uh, they feel like other people have it better than them or they feel like they should have it better than others or they, they there's a pride uh, that's holding them back from taking the next step or maybe an embarrassment thing like um, it, it's, it's really hard to say there's so many different scenarios but what I want to say here is God said or the Father said Everything I have is yours. Well, he's always had it. He could have literally gone and grabbed the goat and killed it and had a party with his friends or whatever. And I bet you dad would have been like, awesome, man. You've, you've always done everything for me. Yeah, you're celebrating with your friends. You know, just keep it respectful at the house. Uh, and then dad says, we had to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead and has come back to life. Now what his dad is saying here is your brother. The person you. You. You can't even call your own brother. You, you, you called him my son but not your brother. Um, has died. Like he went out and he tried to be who he thought he wanted to be. Um just to find out that this life was not actually his. It was a dream. Um, it wasn't his purpose life. And when he came to his sense, uh, he came back to daddy. He came back to God. He, uh, he said, um, he was dead and he came back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The thing here is, guys, even if you're new Christ back then, or you have an idea, or you like you believe in God, but you don't necessarily believe in the church, truthfully, uh, back then, the, I'm using my phone. The reason I'm not recording on my phone is because it's broken. Um, but as I was saying, back then, all these people that wrote the Bible didn't have a Bible. They didn't get to uh, flip a page and say, this book in Romans chapter 16, verse 32, whatever. I'm just spitting out numbers. Um, it says blah, blah, blah. No. The Bible is you. The Bible is me. God made the body. Jesus Christ made the body. The Bible he meant for us to be the book we could grab the book throw it burn it doesn't matter that's not where the word comes from that's not how he intended it to be he meant for us to be able to communicate with each other and <clears throat> I love this thank you God because a lot of this I couldn't even think of earlier when I was trying to think about how to teach this um It's awesome. It's um, sorry I had a freeze there. It's re it's really awesome because, well, knowing that the Bible is actually me and you, and it's it's the living word. It's they specifically call it the living word is because it's supposed to be spoke out in life through me and you, through everyone, not just preachers, pastors, fathers. I don't care what religion you are. If you're hearing it, awesome that 
the word gets passed on through love, through care, loving your neighbor, doesn't matter who they are, what their background is, what they, what their sins are, um, because they can all be forgiven. So, and I asked, and I said this earlier, um, I'm going to give you the choice, the chance right now, uh, to, to come to Christ. If you haven't come to Christ and if you've, if you've been with Christ, uh, awesome and keep walking that faith. I love you for that. But if you haven't, or if you just want to rededicate, I'm going to give you that chance right now, uh, for, if you believe in your heart that Jesus, uh, lived his life and died for our sins and rose again um, then I want then <clears throat> you're just saved and he actually died for sins so he's taking your sins I don't care what they are and he can take them over and over again um he doesn't care what they are, I should say. Um, and so I uh, just I, I want to I want to give you the chance right now to to say Father God, and just repeat after me, Father God. You died for me. You were put on the cross, and you rose again three days later. You took my sins to the grave. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for being my, my Savior and my Lord. I accept you as my Savior and my Lord. I choose to follow you. Please work through me as I live this life on earth. In your name, I love you and amen. Sorry, I chopped that up and uh, I'll get better at, at doing that part. But seriously, the teaching was all him. Um, and I want to just say thank you guys for being on this with me. I love you. Uh, my time's going up, so... I'll see you on the next teaching where we talk about daddy or the father and what I saw in him. And then afterwards, teaching number five, it's going to be awesome.